Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing a quick review of Dust Ship Glory by Elaine M. Will. So just a disclaimer before we start, this book was provided free of charge. I've actually purchased one of Elaine's books in the past, which is a book called Look Straight Ahead. And she's also spoken at one of my writing workshop events. So we kind of have a history, I guess. What's interesting about uh, Elaine is that she is a self-published graphic novelist. I say self-published, she actually runs her own press with her partner Mark Allard Will, who is also involved in the graphic novel scene. They have a publisher called Cuckoo's Nest Press, who published this book. It's also got funding from the Saskatchewan Arts Board, so this is because they're based in Canada, and that's actually where this is set as well. Now, this is actually a non-fiction graphic novel as well, so it tells the story of Tom Sukanum. Yeah, so he was a Finnish immigrant to Canada, and basically started building a ship in the middle of the kind of arid plains of Saskatchewan. So I'm gonna read you the blurb. In the Depression era of 1930s Saskatchewan, Finnish immigrant Tom Sukanen battles the dust storms, drought and all common sense to fulfil a dream of building a steamship, the Santianen, to navigate Canada's thousands of miles of waterways to make it to the Atlantic and back to his spiritual home of Finland. Amid the scarcity of resources and the alienation of his town folk, can he hope to succeed? Based on the true story of Tom Sukanen and adopted from Andreas Schroeder's novel of the same name. So that's a little bit of background information. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through and pick up on some of my notes and then I'm gonna give it my overall rating at the end. So the first thing to mention really is the quality of the, just the work in general here. I mean, bearing in mind this is a self-published graphic novel effectively. When you start to look at the interior of it, it's really beautifully done, I'm very impressed. And then you can look here at some of the illustrations. We'll zoom in a bit close. And here we've got this is kind of the nautical theme happening at the start. It is all in black and white, and I noticed a review somebody posted recently where they said they didn't like graphic novels that are in black and white. But I think it kind of works here, especially if you think that if you were watching footage of this happening, it would be shot in black and white anyway, because that was the era. So it actually adds an interesting ele element to it. I mean, it's basically historical non-fiction. But equally, you know, Tom Sukanen is kind of a legend, a living legend, really. I mean, he's dead now, so he's not living, but he's, he's pretty much a legend, except it is all true as well. At times, the dialect can be hard to understand, and that's because, again, Sukanen is an immigrant, so he doesn't speak fluent English. So, for example, he says, What you be want it from me, you build rats. What you be want it. What you be do it here. What for you all be come and break in this. So, it is a little bit difficult however it's kind of important i think it adds to his sense of character and that's also resolved in later parts where parts of it are presented as translated from finnish and so it then goes into kind of less of the dialect so you don't have to worry too much about the dialect being a problem it, it kind of adds to the sense of his character and the realness of the story i mean there are some great double spreads as well just like this one and the whole story is really about this this chap, and he's presented as a bit of a simple chap. Um, he's had some kind of problems with his wife and with his family as well, which are explored throughout this. And um, yeah, he's building this boat, and nobody really knows why. And he just doesn't he doesn't care whether they understand or not. He just keeps on building his boat. It's almost a tale of resilience, kind of like almost like a cautionary tale. So yeah, we can see here, for example, it then comes up translated from Finnish. It jumps backwards and forwards through time to a certain extent, but it does it in quite a tasteful way that actually does a great job of kind of telling you more of the story and at the right time as well. So you wouldn't want to know all the backstory before you go into it. The backstory comes along at certain points throughout the novel and then adds an extra spin on it that you can, I think it then makes it more rereadable as well because you could go back and enjoy it with a fresh, you know, with this fresh perspective. Tom as a character isn't necessarily the most likeable of characters as well, but equally he is an intriguing character. Again, because he is portrayed as this kind of slow-witted chap that almost might be a genius. There is a moment in this when the characters are like, what if we've got it all wrong and instead of us poking fun at Tom, we should actually be making arcs of our own. I'm also, I'm not going to tell you how it all ends up with the dust chip as well, because uh, I think I don't, I, it's a pretty big spoiler to let you know what happens in the end, so don't worry, I'm not going to do that. It does get a little bit dark, though. I mean, there's a kind of almost a domestic violence scene. Uh, I mean, I don't know if you can see this. This is what what happens. 
So potential trigger warning for that. However, that said, it's done again. It's done quite artfully and quite tastefully. And again, it is a part of the story. So you, I think it would be wrong to whitewash that out. And also it's an accident, really. I also like how it's split into sections. So you can see like this, this would be the start of a new section. And that kind of helps you to pace yourself through it. It took me longer than I thought to read this. It took me a couple of days. Um, and I don't know why that is. I didn't do a huge amount of reading, I guess. Some more of the fantastic visuals there. It gets sad as well. It does. Get, it is a kind of book that will hit you in the feels. It's, it's weird because, like I said, Tom as a character isn't necessarily the most likeable character. He's definitely flawed. And quite often, if I don't particularly like a character, I struggle to like the book. But in this case, I don't know. I kind of he's kind. You kind of have a love hate relationship with him. He's kind of sweet, but at the same time you know it's a bit of both i also think as well this would be great for schools i mean i know it's adapted from andrea schroeder's novel and i haven't read that so i don't know how much of this is andrea schroeder and how much of it is elaine m will however especially for schools in saskatchewan or in canada in general i think it's quite it's something that you could have a health you know a quite a good healthy discussion around it as a class and also again it teaches you the area and some of the history of the area and you know you could have all sorts of discussions like was Tom right to be building the boat and I can't say too much more about it because we're getting towards the ending of the plot really the whole plot from start to finish is basically the story of him building this boat and he gets closer and closer to the completion and then there's the ending but throughout the process of him building it that's when we get the flashbacks into his past and we get to see the way that he's mistreated by the people in the town for example you know a lot of things like kids daring their friends to you know run up and try and steal something from him and rumors that he eats kids and all of this kind of stuff. People spread a lot of like malicious stuff. They call him a commie all the time because it's around the time that communism was the big threat. But it does it does a great job of actually evoking this historical sense of time and place as well. And you know, congratulations to Elaine M. Well for doing that. And as well, it comes with this these bits at the end, which is super cool, which is this pinup gallery. And she's got different uh, artists to contribute to it, and they've all drawn Tom Sukanen. So, for example, you might recognise the style there. So that is James Lloyd, who's from The Simpsons and Futurama. We've got Tom Grummet from Death of Superman, various others. Um, I'm not going to go through all of these. There we go, there she is. There's the author, Elaine M. Will. So all in all, I mean, I think this is a really nicely put together graphic novel and I don't read a huge amount of graphic novels, but when I do, I prefer to read ones a bit like this or things like Mouse, for example, that's kind of got this historical significance. I think it adds a whole new element to it. I think you can do a graphic novel just for the sake of doing a graphic novel and it doesn't necessarily add anything to it you know the fact that it is a graphic novel doesn't necessarily add too much so for example the neil gaiman um, american god series i've got a few of those and it is just a graphic novel adaptation of the book and i don't know i i didn't find it too interesting i didn't feel like it added much but i think things like this have actual you know genuine cultural and historical significance and you know fair play well done to elaine m will and cuckoo's nest press so it's time for the rating and as you can probably guess from the way i've been talking about this i'm going to give this a five out of five this isn't favoritism again i do know the author but i think for her last book i think i gave that a four or five out of five and again i i bought that with my own money actually price wise for a graphic novel i don't think it's too expensive and again it's coming from an indie press as well and the reason i gave it five out of five is because i could see no way to improve it i think it's um a great accomplishment and yeah, I'm excited to be sharing this with you all. So there you have it. That was my review of Dust Ship Glory by Elaine M. Will. Don't forget to leave a comment to let me know what you think of this story. Let me know whether you've ever heard of Tom Sukanen as well. And uh, yeah, please hit subscribe if you'd like to see more bookish videos. And in the meantime, I will see you soon. Bye-bye.